Hey everybody, what is going on? This is Daryl, aka The D from the Simply Global Podcast here with Ricky from Plastic Fantastic Collectibles. Nice plug. Thanks. No one expected that. Yeah, and it sounds right. a little echoey. We're at an Airbnb in Knoxville, Tennessee. In a basement. In a basement. We just finished with uh, uh, Knoxville Fanboy Expo Can't 2023. At that to be until where he was at. And he's been there for three days. I mean, uh, all I remember from it, this is what I'll take from this con. Uh, one guy talking way too much over the loudspeaker for the entire show. Yep. And I still hear it, and we're like three miles away, and yeah. he's already gone. Oh my gosh, that guy was brutal. Oh my lord, <laughs> it was terrible. So this this con was different. You know, most big conventions you go to, they give you a book at the door, and yep. it tells you every panel, where they're going to be, what room what time, where the photo ops are gonna be, all that. Nope, they didn't do that here. No. They just paid a guy that talked really loudly all day long to let everybody know where they were gonna be, what was going on. So every, literally every five minutes he was making an announcement and we had a speaker right above our head. And I about pooped myself the first time I heard it. Yeah, it I mean, <laughs> I jumped so literally, <laughs> I mean, he literally got air on, on that. I, I did. I, at terrible. first I was like, what in the world? So bad. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, one of them in particular, Sean Aston was there, and it was probably 20 times he reminded people when this man was having photo ops and when this man was uh, about to leave. Yes, and then he I got really, that wrong. I, I, as soon as, as soon as the photo op is over in 15 minutes, Sean Aston will be leaving. Hurry up and get your autographs and your photos. That's what the guy sounded like, for real. And he then enunciated every and, syllable. And then he comes back. <sighs> the vendors all wanted to find this guy and rip his voice box out. It was terrible. Today, I, I bought a bunch of books. And I'll show those books later. There were some of the cheaper books and stuff. But... One of the guys, he's like, he was having a discount on all this stuff. And he said, he said, uh, the one thing you have to do in order to get the discount is punch that guy in the face. We couldn't find him. We tried. He literally said. <laughs> I think hilarious. they had this guy hiding behind like a curtain, like the Oz. <laughs> so nobody would see him. I am the great and all powerful announcer of Fanboy Expo. I'm convinced. Nothing he, to see here. I'm convinced he was off site. I'm pretty sure he was. <laughs> and it was like, dude, dude. Brutal. I mean, uh, for me, other than that, it, it was all right. It was all right. not that great, but all right. It's really Celebrity Con is what this was. It was. I mean, you had tons of celebrities. On one of my videos coming up, you'll see me go around the entire perimeter of the, the con. Tons of celebrities there. So that was kind of cool, but I didn't really see too many of them. It was great for yeah. the fans of these yeah. folks that wanted to see them, but the I will say the, the Coliseum, the people who did this, they didn't make it easy on these fans to meet these folks. Nope. I mean, you had to buy packages and you had to go to certain places to, you know, get those packages taken care of before you went. Most people were thinking, hey, I bought this package. I'm going to go to their booth. They'll take the photo off with it. No, they didn't explain any of this stuff on the website. Basically, you had to, nope. if you wanted to get a signature from them, you had to go down, stand in line, and get a signature. If you got a photo op, then you had to wait until their photo op time and go all the way upstairs to a different room to have the photo op. And it's it was very confusing. So you had people running around like crazy all day mm -hmm. long trying to figure out who was doing what. And yes, announcer guy was telling everybody, but it, it was just... It, to me, if I had been just a person there to see folks, I would have been extremely frustrated with the whole situation. Yeah, and not only that, the times for their photo ops were changing. Right. And I was like, I mean, why are these, these things not And sticking? they were changing these around, I think, because people like, see Jeff Hardy, for instance, he came in like on Saturday, halfway through the day. He was mm -hmm. supposed to be there first thing that morning, but I don't know if a flight got delayed mm -hmm. or if he already had a prior engagement that wasn't announced or what, but you have people coming in at different times when they were all supposed to be there at the beginning of the show on Friday. 
So, you know, and I don't think Jeff wasn't there on Friday at all, was he? Or was it Friday when he came in like halfway through the show? Was it Friday when you, you saw him and he pat you on the back? Was that Saturday? I can't remember if that was Friday or Saturday. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Rob Van Dam, they said he actually missed Friday. He was supposed to be there. And he kind of made that up by staying uh, today, which right. is Sunday. So he was supposed to be there Friday, a lot Saturday. Of left uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. so you know you had to get in Friday or Saturday. Most of the Lord of the Rings people left. Yep. Um, um, Silent Bob, he left. Kevin Silent Smith, <laughs> Mister, I'm gonna take you out in my suitcase. Yeah, he uh, walked <laughs> right. He walked right in front of our booth. I mean, he had his handlers with him, but I mean, he looked like he was trying to pass everybody. He had the suitcase on wheels. Like bumping people out of the way as he was going, I was like, "Dude, calm down, man. Take, take a pill here, buddy. Chill." So I will say this: I've talked to a buddy of mine uh, quite a few times about Jamie Hughes, and he's actually like seen him at a couple different conventions. Mm -hmm. And those couple different conventions, Jay actually went out and walked the floor and like met with fans and you know went to booze and shopped and david actually got to like hang out with him for a while at quite a few you know one of these shows and like go and shop with him and they talked and you know basically became buddies at the show this show jay couldn't do anything like that yeah i mean rigid rigid schedule and you know when i did see him going up the escalator to go upstairs for his photo op he looked so stressed i mean the man looked like he didn't even want to be there yeah. Which was terrible because yeah. from my understanding, he's super jovial and always happy and like really wants to meet his fans and all that. And I, I just didn't see where a lot of them were like more happy to be there because I guess the way the schedule was set up for mm -hmm. them or whatever. I don't know. But uh, one of the guys that uh, <laughs> I did see walk by the booth was uh, Devon Dudley. Mm -hmm. and, and he walks by, I was like, hey, Devon. And he was like, hey, man, how's it going? And I was like, man, it's awesome, man. And he was like, awesome, buddy. And I thought that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, Enzo went by our booth like 17 yeah, times. Yeah, Enzo Amore. Nobody. No, nobody. No. I was like, hey, Enzo, how you doing? He was like. Just gone. Him and that hairdo. Straight focus. <laughs> Straight focus. Um, Lionel Luther, what was his name? Lionel Luther. It was hilarious. He was in Smallville. Uh, yeah, the, the guy that played Lionel Lofer. Why can't I think of a man's name right now? I can't think of it. But anyway, he walks past the, the booth. He wasn't there. All right? Yes. It's his booth. Classic Fantastic Toys. Got it on the big banner. Right. He walks by. He looks over and goes, hey, Plastic Fantastic. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, dude, you would have loved that movie. I would have. That would have been great. <laughs> but I wasn't there. <laughs> You know, Marla happens. Gibbs was there who played Florence on the Jeffersons way back in the day. Yep. You know, she walked by and smiled as she went by. So I thought that was kind of cool. So, uh, yeah, I was going to see a few of the celebs. Uh, Holly Marie Johnson Adams. It's, <laughs> Whatever. It's a joke we've had the whole the whole weekend. He could not remember her name. I, it's life, Joey I mean. Lauren Adams. Yeah, but he messed it up every time he said I, I it. Did it he just did purpose. it on purpose after that. Oh, I did get to see, uh, what's the name, Soup Nazi. He was coming up the escalator as I was coming down the escalator. And I spoke to him, and he smiled and said hello. So. Soup Nazi was there? Yes. I did not know he was there. I knew I Newman was there. was there, yeah. I knew Newman was there. Yeah, he was there. I didn't. I, there you go. There was. I did see um, in one of the excursions when I was out, a guy had a ladle that he got the Soup Nazi to sign. It was great. It was like a black ladle and the soup <laughs> Nazi had wrote no soup for you and it had a silver pen on it and silver marker. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Gosh, it was, it was a lot of people there. Lots of wrestlers there. Tons of them. It was, it was a celebrity con. I mean, Which, you know, we're not going to go on about it all night. Yeah, but we got Ron Simmons. So you just are. wanted to go over there for one reason. One reason only. What was that? I just want to be like, Damn! <laughs> It'd be funny if he got him and said, That's trademark. Yep. <laughs> Knock me out. That's the only reason I wanted to see him. I just yeah. want to do that. Okay. But again, on the video, I have like, a, I'm going to do, um, I have a thing where I go by and show all the celebrity booths, but it was early in the morning before everybody got there. So you guys will get to see all the celebs on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but all in all, my take from it again, the one guy too loud. Fun weekend though. Yeah. It was cool. <laughs> it's, uh, the parking situation was a little jacked. Yeah. Um, Lonian was. 
not as crazy as loadout was. Yeah, it took yeah. me two and a half hours to get into the building, get unloaded, and get out. Mm -hmm. um, and it only took me 10 minutes to get loaded up yeah. from the booth because we already had it ready. Yeah. So that's definitely something they need to address next year on how they handle that. Um, the lot they had the vendors stay at to wait to load in was like a mile. It was way so, across um, across a river right, or something. Yeah, it was like a mile away from the place. It was ridiculous. Place. I understand they didn't want to like back up traffic down the road waiting to get into the place because you have to drive under the Coliseum and come yeah. in and then go into get your stuff. But they need to, a, a better system would have been assign every vendor a number. Yeah. And ha give every vendor 30 minutes and say, this is how much time you have. Figure out we have enough room in the bottom of this for 30 vendors at 30 minutes a piece. App it. That's all they get. And once those 30 people are gone, move the next 30 people in. If somebody moves before that, go ahead and marshal in another couple. It shouldn't be as hard as they make it. I mean, it was, it was brutal. I mean, you know, they, they didn't, the show was over at five. They didn't let you start uh, waiting down there until 4.30. So I had to leave him at the booth and pack up before that. So he didn't have to do all the packing by himself. Um, and go down there. By the time I got there, there was already 35 to 40 cars deep waiting yep. by the time I got there. So there's a lot that can be approved about it, but I will say this overall, every person I met that worked there was extremely nice. Yep. They were very helpful if you had a question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily think it was any of the volunteers' fault or any of this kind of stuff that, you know, even the people who put on the show. I think it's just logistics. Somebody really needs to look at it better for next year. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as far as being like the person selling there, a vendor, it, it was not a great show sales wise mm -hmm. for, for me because a lot of people are spending that money on celebrity stuff. Yeah. So I don't know that yes. I would do the show again. And if I did, I would probably like, I'd probably split a booth with somebody and I would think a little bit better about what I'm bringing. So can't mm -hmm. tell you how many people I had asked me for Lord of the Rings stuff. Can't tell you how many people asked me for $6 million man stuff because he was there and so was Lindsey Wagner. You know, have toys that people could buy to get signed while mm -hmm. they're there, which I didn't have a whole lot of that stuff, but if I would know ahead of time that I'm going to be at a show like that, I can get it. Yeah. You know, so really it's uh, this is the first time i've ever sold at a celebrity con so if i ever decide to do yeah. it again i'm going to be better prepared for it yeah it, it's your it's your wizard world your galaxy con yeah type of thing so i tend I, to do better at actual like toy shows or yeah. even comic book shows yeah i didn't i didn't know what to expect because i had never uh, been to a fanboy expo and they do these all over the place like mm -hmm. like galaxy con and, and wizard Orlando. world and all that stuff there. orlando's their next big one i, I want to so, say yeah so for me, I like I didn't I didn't know. I was like, hey, I'll come help you out. Well, no big deal. But there were a ton yeah. of great vendors there. I mean, I will say this: I go to a lot of I go to a lot of shows. I, I sell at quite a few, and this is the first show I've been at that had a ton of vendors that had vintage toys. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's me and like one other person in the room, and then like common vendors, and that was it. Yep. People selling pops, you know, stuff like that. There was a ton of great stuff there, and you'll see a lot of this great stuff here in a second when we start showing yeah, you our yeah, hall. He got a... You got a lot of good stuff too. Come on, man. <laughs> I got a few things. Yeah. I uh, got things. <laughs> I, I had not planned on buying anything, but I think No, he didn't. No. But I think the the fact it's that Christmas it wasn't, Day over here, right? wasn't a great show for a lot of vendors that they were willing to cut some really insane deals. Yeah. And I'm not gonna be willing to pass on something that you know, I can save a lot of money on in the long run. Because this is all stuff that I would have eventually gotten at some point anyway. Well, one of them, I don't think you would have because you may not have known much about that. Yes, and we'll talk about that yeah. in a second. And, and one of the things that I got uh, at last day, literally at pack up, as the guy was packing up, and he cut me a heck of a deal on it. Stick around for that. That's going to be the last thing I, I think you guys will, you know, my comic book people, I think y'all be like, that's nice. Yep. Uh, at least I hope so. If not, you know what? I'm still happy with it. And exactly. that's okay. And my special little shirt. Whatever. <laughs> All right. I'm going to start showing some stuff. Show some stuff. All right. So. The hall begins at uh, 1440. <laughs> Talk too much, Daryl. <laughs> 
All right, we're going to roll through this pretty quick. No so, more. this is my Batman stuff. I'm a big Batman fan, um, huge Batman 89 fan. So, it's a little of both. But, um, so all this is pretty cool. I got these two things from one vendor. It is a... Uh, Hold it up closer. There you go. He forgot what it was. Pop Gun, I did. Pop Gun Target game. A lot of this kind of card stuff came out, you know, back in the 80s. So I thought that was pretty sweet. I don't see stuff like that very often. I actually thought this was earlier than that. No, it's yeah. uh, 86, 88, somewhere in there. I think it's 86. Uh, yeah, 86, yeah. 86, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, to go along with that, he also had the handcuffs. And I will not be taking these out of package. And I actually had these when I was a kid, and they were sturdy for plastic handcuffs. Like they worked really well. Um, I locked myself up with them plenty of times and couldn't get them off for a little while. So he got the key. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. oh and uh, Toys R Us sticker still on it. Yes. Uh, that's it, awesome. <laughs> and then to go along with my Batman 89 theme, I ended up picking up this projector gun for the that's movie. Cool. It's basically like, it's got slides that you put in. It's got little slides of the movie. And it's got a little light behind it. You press it and it shows up on the wall, which was pretty freaking awesome. But look at how nice that box is. I mean, too. just that box killer. Is, that box is right off the shelf of 1990. I just didn't expect to see something this That's, nice. That is a beautiful far, box. You know, that is something from 89. This is amazing. So, yeah, that was pretty awesome. Back in the and summer then of the other, 89. The other Batman thing. Never seen it. Didn't know what yeah, it was. Yeah, this is one of those things. When I said, uh, yeah, he would never have gotten this. Because he wouldn't have known about it. And I will never see another one of these again. So nope. this is put out by a company called PCA Apparel. It was made in 1989, I want to say. I think that's what you said on it. Yeah, yeah it's uh, yes, 1989. So right there during the Batman time. But it is a size 5 pair of Joker pajamas. Never worn. Still in the original plastic with the hanger and the cardboard Joker face. And when I saw that hanging up, like Daryl saw it first, yeah. he pointed it out to me, and he we we were talking about how cool it was, and we we're talking to the vendor about it, and he told us what the price was, one what he wanted, yeah. and then he was like, "But for y'all, I'll give it to you for this." And I was like, "I didn't ask the price on it because I saw it before he did." Yeah, uh, and I I was like, "Wow, that is awesome." I'm and my I thought was well, that's way out, gonna be out of my price range, so. I didn't even ask. Right. And the price he said, if he, if I had asked me, said it, I would have taken it before he got to it. But you know, and what? you were also thinking about getting that thing that you're going to show last. Yes. So that was yes. one reason you were trying to be conservative. But at, at the that same point. time, though, that is awesome. Uh, and just this one little thing. This to me, this touch of this little button on there. You know, it's not a real button, but look how bright that is. Mm -hmm. I know the the bag is cloudy, but this thing is beautiful colors are amazing and he was telling me oh you should just replace the bag and i'm like you know i'll be able to see it better if i did but mm -hmm. this is the original bag that it hung on on mm -hmm. the shelves in the stores in 89 i think i'd rather just leave it in that i would i mean that's pretty freaking nostalgic it's yeah. pretty cool mm -hmm. um i know i probably saw stuff like this back in the day in the stores i just don't really remember it i don't so, remember seeing anything back in the day you know maybe it's not something they sold in our area it's hard to say mm -hmm. but so that's the Batman stuff. Um, then I am all about Masters of the Universe, and I'm also all about knockoff Masters of the Universe stuff. So and I'm getting this. It's called Combo. It's kind of hard to see, but the guy had, it's all Motu type characters. He's got half a face as skull and half as regular. This is actually the bad guy. They called him, um, where was it at on here? Uh, Satana is his name. This is the main bad guy. Is it Satana? I don't know. I don't think but so. But I like the name. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that guy looks different on here, but Combo. This might, no, it's not Combo. Robo. It's a bunch of different See, ones. See, I thought Combo was like the name of the line, but I could be wrong. One of the characters is called Combo, but that's the oh. back of it. It shows all the characters. So the guy that had this, he actually had like six or seven other ones. No, he had like four other ones trying to cut me a deal on all of them and I was trying to be somewhat conservative so I didn't get them all this was actually my favorite of them all so I just picked the one uh, looking them up online they're actually pretty easy to get so I might end up ordering a few at some point the ones I really really like but yeah I thought that was pretty neat and then I ended up today picking up this original 
Ben Cooper, Doctor Doom mask, and uh, Halloween costume set. The uh, plastic is still there, but it's kind of like torn up a little bit like a lot of them are. So I'm probably actually just going to pull that out and replace it with a new piece of plastic. That way it'll display a lot better, but the, the costume itself's in great condition. So how cool is that? And then also today I ended up getting this. That was awesome. Love lunch boxes and ET is a big thing for me. So I was happy to find this in pretty decent shape. It's uh it's dirty. I'm gonna tell you what yeah. it needs a it needs a really good cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thermos itself inside, I think they still got soup in it from yeah. 1985 yeah. or whatever it is, yeah. but uh, I'm gonna give it a good point. When I get home. Soup Nazi let them have some and they didn't eat it all. Um, there is, a, <laughs> I did get a transformer combiner, so I got Computron. It's uh, it's five different robots to combine into one. Ooh. I'm not pulling it out of the bag and try to put it together right now because it's in pieces, but that's one thing that I got. Uh, then I found this today and just I didn't know what it was when I first walked by and the guy wasn't at the booth, but. I got to looking at it, and what I got, I came back later on, and so it's a 1985 folder, and it's uh, Transformers, which, you know, I'm huge into Transformers. Well, the thing that got me is it's actually a Frito-Lay promotional item. Um, you got it when you bought Frito-Lay multi-packs at that point in time. So it's an actual, like, folder from back in the day. Never been used. It's got the uh, Frito-Lay variety pack logo at the bottom. Thought that was just insanely cool. So that's something that will be going up on my wall for sure when I get home. Do you have any connection with Frito Lay? <laughs> I worked for Frito Lay for a little while, uh, seven years actually, as a delivery <laughs> driver. So um, I'm not going to hold that against this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then the last, I've got three more things. They're Star Wars related. I've actually been looking for two of these for a long time and the other one did not come from the convention but it was actually brought to me at the convention because i bought it from a guy online that lived here and i let him know that i could pick it up while i was here so <clears throat> first one is i y'all know i love ewoks well i found nyla latara excuse me latara in the box complete with her tag still sealed Still all in the little package. Yep. Got, and I mean, it's dang on your perfect. What Same year was booth. that? What's that? What year was that? That is 1984. 84. Yep. It's uh, right after Jedi came out. There will be a meme posted like right here so y'all can see. See that too. Oh, God. <laughs> and then the next one was I finally found a nice boxed wicket. So now I have all of the Ewok plushes. Nice. Um, it was the two big ones and then like I want to say four of the smaller babies. So I have all those now. The babies didn't come in boxes like these did. The two big ones did. And then last but not least, so a guy that last year I was here for my honeymoon. I was actually in Pigeon Forge, which is not that far from here. And uh, me and my wife were there. We ended up going to the flea market. And they ended up going to this guy's booth in this flea market. Gigantic flea market. It was indoor-outdoor. He had a gigantic toy and comic booth. I mean, huge. It took up, I, I want to say, a good house size full of toys and comics. So I made a connection with this guy, bought some stuff from him, and we've been talking back and forth the whole year since then. He lets me know when he gets cool stuff, and I'll find things that he might be interested in because he's a collector too. And we sell trade back and forth, all that. Well, he came across this at, in a collection and uh, he posted it online. So I hit him up and he was like, I don't know that I want to sell it. I think I just want to kind of have it hanging up in the store for a while. And I, I convinced him for the most part, I guess, to sell it. He gave me a price I think he thought that I wouldn't go for. And I was like, okay, cool, sold. <laughs> and because I knew I would never see one of these ever again. This is probably going to be like one of the biggest nostalgia pieces in my collection. So this is 1983. Burger King, Return of the Jedi, glasses, ceiling hanger, original from Burger King. These are stupid rare. You never see them. And when you do see them, they are like beat. I mean, just torn all to pieces. All the little corners are like completely gone. These are a little frayed, but for the most part, and it's even still got the original string that it hung from the ceiling. So, That's I... Cool. 
I am like overjoyed with this. And I ended up getting four of the glasses, the four Burger King Return of the Jedi glasses from him. It was part of the deal. But I already had them, so I'm just, I put them out for sale at my booth. <laughs> but I am just, I was not expecting to find this kind of stuff and at the deals that I found it, to be honest with you. So I, I just couldn't pass. And a few of these things might end up being sold one day, but for the most part, a lot of these are personal collection that I'm probably not going to ever get rid of. There you go. Yeah. So, Daryl, what did you pick up? Yeah, I'll show you all three of the things I got. And, well, you know, whatever. I, I mean, I, I don't... I, I told I was joking with him before the thing. I was like, it's like Christmas. You got the rich kid stuff, and then you got the poor kid stuff over here. Yeah, I was <laughs> but not stick the rich the kid. Last thing. Yeah, I was not the rich kid. That thing is much. pretty doggone awesome. Probably first off, so much for myself now. Uh, one of the first things I saw uh, on Friday at, at a booth, and I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. And I'm a Star Wars guy. I'm a Batman guy. I'm a cards guy. So I got a cards. little of them. Hot. So we start off with this big toy right here. Which is really freaking cool. I saw this. It's the Han Solo with Han and Carbonite. I was like, oh, heck yeah, that's awesome. And you know what's really funny about that piece? What? I don't really like the big 12-inch doll like from this era. Mm -hmm. But I really just want the Han Carbonite out of it. Well, like, if I could find and just have that carbonite loose, I probably would have bought it at, like, a cheap rate. Well, one of the things I find to be really amazing is, for some reason, Lando was on the back. <laughs> well, I mean, it's Lando's fault. He's in it. That's he, why. He's, it's just Lando is showing concern. <laughs> concerned Lando. It's all Lando's like, fault. That's why he's, he's on like, the back of it. Like, look at all right. sad. Look what, look what I did. Drinking a Colt 45. <laughs> Gets them every time. Yeah, gets them every time. So I, I thought that was pretty doggone awesome. It is cool. What year was that? 89? No, it's 90s. Nin uh, 98. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing, just backwards. Yeah. Same thing. About Same 10 thing. years later. Same thing backwards. Same thing. Um, Here's his Tourette's again. Dip, 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 dip. I'm pretty sure that's not Tourette's when you have the numbers backwards. No, I meant the way you kept repeating it over and over and over and over. Lost like, money on this piece. I've got all of the uh, individual figures from the Arkham games. Uh, some of the multi packs I don't have. Some of the giant size ones from the the very first series I don't have. But this one I didn't have, and I wanted it when it first came out. But the price was just too high, and I was like, I, I can't pay like sixty five, seventy dollars, whatever it was when it first came. I think it was sixty when it first came out. Yeah. And so I was so like, right. I was like, you know what? I got it today for a yeah, decent price. Yeah, I don't know. He sold it to me. Uh -huh. He gave me a... I can give you that $5 back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he sold me about up. No. no. Okay. <laughs> it's got Executioner, Lady Shiva, and the good doctor, Harlene Quinzel. So, I was like, yeah, kind of like that Harley character. Right? Yeah, yeah. Harley. So, you know, pick that up. Um, it's got a clipboard. It's got a clipboard. Oh, I never even noticed yeah. that it had a clipboard. Yeah, that's it's great. got hardly a clipboard. It's got executioner's gloves and stuff. So that's pretty sweet. The Shiva figure was actually my favorite out of all of that. Well, you're wrong, but that's okay. It's one of the few Harleen uh, Quinzel figures. You don't see those often. No, I mean, there's lots of Harley Quinn stuff, but you rarely see Harleen stuff. So I thought, yeah, gotta get that. Gotta, gotta do it. Gotta do it. Not got, got to do it. Uh, you know what? Let's go with some cards. And then we'll get back to the figs. Take them glasses off. Uh, one guy had some old cards. And he had a whole bunch of them. I didn't get all of them. I just picked out a few and they were uh, a really good price, I thought. So oh, yeah, age, I think so. Yeah, from 1965. And the condition of them is really amazing. They're very easily gradable, if that's mm -hmm. what you want to do. Yeah. We're not going to put them in order because we're going to get the cool stuff at the end. <laughs> 1965 Superman trading cards from the George Reeves Superman stuff. And I was like, you don't see these. Uh, this is a Lois Lane card. I forgot to pick up low. <laughs> then we've got uh, the parents, jor -El. And Mrs. Jorel, what's, what's her name? Old Lady Jorel? I can never remember her name to save my life, to be honest with you. I'm not a huge Superman fan, so mm -hmm. I forget that kind of stuff. 
It literally doesn't have her name. It just keeps it's Jorel's on here repeatedly, but she's not on there. Is she actually on the card? Uh, Red Toes. What? No, Red. No, yeah, that's her, isn't it? Yeah, that's old lady Jorel. Red Toes is the commissioner's not. It's not his wife. I'm like, that's funny. Uh, next, Clark Kent, Ace Reporter. I do kind of feel like it's funny on this card that they don't even talk about her. They Not at all. Her name is Los Out of the Times, then, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Uh, next, uh, number nine, Metropolis Hero Superman. And I looked this up on eBay, so clearly it's official. The Superman rookie card. I'm not talking about this. <laughs> We may or may not have, have had a, a little disagreement on this one. What, what did we end up calling it? The first appearance. Is Superman first appearance on cards? Yes. <laughs> it can't be a rookie card. I mean, it's not real. It's like it's not a sport. First time. <sighs> first time. Yeah. Rookie card. Yeah, whatever. Bam, soup rookie. Up, oh, what was that? Bam, soup rookie. <laughs> and it's no longer dead myth. Well, it didn't drop in some of this nice protector. Oh. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. I mean, I just, I, I saw those, and he had a big stack of them. And it's one of those things, he's like, man, I would like to just buy them all. But for the price, I can't buy them all. So I just picked a few of them that I liked. Up pretty quick. Yeah. But all in all, I thought, I was like, that's pretty quick. Pretty cool. He had a ton of sets of cards. Some amazing, he had Goonies to the set. I had to talk myself out of the, it was the second, um, was it the second uh, year? It, it was. It was no uh, series. Series two. two. Empire Strikes Back cars the blue box. A yeah. Full case of that. Well, not a case, but a full box. A full of box, thirty six packs. Yep. I was like, the box awesome. was like beautiful. I mean, it was immaculate. Uh, ninety six Marvel masterpieces box. That's the hard one, from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. Full cases of that one. Yeah, and I mean, it's so many old boxes, lots of old sets of cards. And um, he, that's where he got the um, the the Joker yep, from. That's where I got the Joker from. And I mean, some of the stuff he had was like, oh my goodness! I could I, I could have very easily dropped a couple grand at his yeah. booth without batting an eye, and I it just was, I couldn't do it. But it was, he had some amazing stuff. Let's see. Next, we'll go with the Good Doctor, Doctor Harleen. But Harleen Quinn. I saw this and I was like, I got this at, at a booth uh, with. Um, the uh, Hans Olin. The, the Han. So I was like, you know what? Let's go and get that nice old Harles. 90, uh, 98. And she's going to stay in her plastic prison because they're Plastic prison. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. You will not be free. Not like That's all the, saying. not like all the villains in, in, in Gotham, how they get in but prison and immediately released. You need to take her out so you can actually see her hyenas. That sounded almost dirty. Whatever. The but, hyenas in the package. Show what I'm talking I, about. One thing I find funny, though, is they actually talk about the hyenas on the back, but they do not uh, mention them by name. Lou and Bud. Yeah. From Abbott and Costello. Yeah. So, I think that's kind of cool. I think we'll come over to your house one day when you're sleeping and break in and just unbox all your stuff. Yeah, I'm going to come to your house and uh, trash all that stuff. No. All right, then. I got guns. You can get them. I, I got guns. Damn. Whatever. Oh, oh, oh. Acting. Next, from um, The Adventures of Batman and Robin, the old Harles there. Didn't have that, so I picked that up. That's a really cool figure. I actually really like that one. I'll tell you a figure I do want from the Batman 89. I want the Bob. I have it. Oh, is it in package? Yes. Oh, there you go. Mint in box. Okay. So mint in package. But is the is the package actually meant? In my opinion, yes. Well, yeah, it's just it's this is box. cool. This is the boxing glove one. I like this one. Yeah, this is a line I actually wouldn't mind starting to pick up, but it's so many figures. It's a lot one. of I, figures. I wouldn't want to complete it. This is more than I want to get into because some of those figures in that line are, are popping two or three hundred dollars a piece. I don't know why, but they are. Next, this this giant figure. <laughs> And someone graciously bought him. For all the time and effort and just hard work I had to put on at the booth. So, you know, he bought this for me for health. You see what he's doing? That's what he did all day. 
Yeah, I, I did. I was taking people's money as he was going around. Whatever. <laughs> but it's uh. I'm sorry I have a small bladder. And I'm the one who had the kidney transplant. Uh, <laughs> Darth Vader, the concept figure, the, the gentle giants. And uh, I was actually going to buy this. Because the price they put on it was absolutely ridiculously low. Yeah, I mean, half price Look at, at that least. thing. It was more than half price. Yeah, because the original price, yeah. yeah that was yeah. more than half price less. It, it was yeah. like 90 to 100 when it first came out. Yep. And it was under that. And I was just like, yeah, I'm definitely going to try to get that. He kept hemming and hawing about it. And I looked over there, and this was the only one he had out. Somebody had bought the other one. Yeah, he had two. It was, uh, he had a bunch of boxes, so I thought... Maybe he's just got a few more in there. So Daryl stepped away to go look at some mm -hmm. stuff, and he was right across from us. So I walked over and asked him how many more, how many of those he had. So, and he said he only had the one, so I went ahead and grabbed it that, while he that, still that, had that's it. That's when I went and got the cards. Yep. So that is awesome. I, I don't know if I have a wall in my house this big. <laughs> I always liked this the concept huge. Vader, the, the image. I thought it was really cool, and when that came out, and you actually had a figure to show what it would have looked like, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it was awesome. And I almost picked that up at Big Lick Comic Con last year. One of the people down there that we know had it in his booth, and I almost got it, but it's just so dang on big. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's giant, huge. I mean, it, it, it's gentle, giant. It's gentle, it's gentle. Yeah. Now the last thing. This is probably the coolest thing besides my one cool thing of the whole weekend. Not much cool. I mean, it's six <laughs> months. I was, I, honestly, that, that other is pretty damn sweet too. So, but yeah. this is something the first day I saw this, and you know, it's a comic book. Whoa! I know. You buy comics? It's a great comic book. I know. What? And and I saw this, and I, I was I asked the guy, it's like how 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 much is this? He told me price. I was like, I can't quite go there. So I was like. You know what? Uh, and the whole weekend, I was thinking about this book. And I kept telling him he needed to go back and get it. Yeah, yeah. And I went back as he was packing up, and I was like, do you still have that book? And he was like, he's like, yeah, I still got it. And I was like, well, how much do you want for it? And he said, what did I say? And I told him I told him how much he said. I, I was like, and I, first off, I told him 200 less. I was like, if I wasn't a good person, I would have said this price. And, but I was like, nah, what he really said was this price. He goes, okay. Um, and he actually let me have it for less. Less than that 200 less. Yeah, the, yeah. the 200 less that I, I was actually kind of considering. And I was like, well, there you go. Shook his hands like, I will take this. It is uh, Detective Comics number 94, December 1944, CBCS. 4.0, I was like, oh my gosh, my first one. Uh, Bat under 100. Uh, yeah, under 100. It was, because I've said before, I would like to get Batman, a detective, uh, an action comics, and a Superman all under issue 100. I would really prefer to have them all the same number. We'll see how that works out for right, me. Right, that's going to be really difficult. But, those. but I was just like, you know what? I'm I, super jealous. I'm glad this I is got like this. Great book. I mean, just it, and it's, it's got it's got Harvey for the age. Harvey G. Good, Goodmanson. What? Harvey G. Goodmanson. <laughs> you don't even notice that was there. Yeah, you yeah. Can barely so, see that. So Harvey, uh, I would like to thank you for at some point getting rid of your book. So now it's in in my possession, and it's it's in good hands. It's in very appreciative hands. So, Dick Sprang. Dick Sprang. Dick Sprang. Dick Sprang. He was the artiste back in the day. It's so dark in here. I can't even read the stuff on the back of it. You ain't not no read. I'm going to take it over and read it. Let's see. Um, uh, Finger and Jesse, Mar uh, Jesse Merton. Merton. Mm -hmm. Cover art by George Russos. There you go. But anyway... That to me uh, made my con. Yeah, I mean the other stuff I'm like is pretty sweet. Uh, to be honest, and I hate to do this, Ooh, but me. but hanging out for uh, the last few days always awesome. We have a good time, you know, kind of ribbing each other the whole time. He does it all the time. Yeah, I mean it, it's one upsmanship to who can put the other one down the most. I win. I'm very good at that. You are. I'm just nice. 
I don't, I can't, I don't, I don't go there like you do. Cow, chicken, bull. Whatever. But anyway, that's that's my big, big, big toy for the weekend. So, so very happy about that. Uh, all in all, good week. Yep, it was awesome. I, it's been. It has its high, it's had its highs and lows, but mm -hmm. all in all, I'm happy with the experience, and I am going to have to do some serious work around uh, getting ready for my next convention, which is going to be Big Lake Comic Con in August, and because uh, I have sold a, a decent amount of stuff, that you know I'm really going to have to do some restocking now, so I'll be ready for that show. But August fifth and sixth. Yep. Yep. Fifth and sixth. Uh, I'll be set up same booth I was last year, uh, right next to Bonafide Comics, like right across the aisle from them. Side by side, but an hour in between. So, so really side by side, not really. I mean we're kind of side by side. <laughs> in the vicinity yeah. of we're, in we're the near each other. I'm supposed to have a disc golf tournament on the fifth, so mm -hmm. if that falls through, then I'll come on the fifth. Uh if not, I'll try to be there the sixth. Because I know he's gonna let me, you know, hook me up. I mean, as you know, I clearly that. Yeah, I, I I didn't do enough to uh, earn that for next day. I mean, you know, you said it, not me. Yeah, yeah. and the truth shall set you free. Now you were actually very helpful, and that, that's why I bought that thing for you. Is kind of like show appreciation, yeah. and yeah. some food this weekend too. Yeah, and, and as soon as he bought that for me, I didn't do a thing after that. Yeah, pretty much not. And that was on Saturday. <laughs> No, I mean, he, he did help right much. So when we packed up today, especially, I, I got everything packed up in the totes because he said, you know, you know how you want it. So he just handed me stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I would kind of bring it to him. Right, and, and then I packed it. it. But he broke down my banner, my folded up my banner signs. He broke down the banner poles, got them back in the bags. He, like, pulled up tablecloths and put them away, broke my tables down, broke down all the, the racks and got them together. So he was a very big help. And I do appreciate it. You know what? I'm the best. All, doing all I that, am the best. Whatever. For doing all that, I won't kill you in your sleep tonight. How about that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that the other day, I think you might have. I was very close. Yeah. that's. Why I was hanging. That's why I was hurting so bad yesterday. And I'll beat you in your sleep. You beat didn't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, quite frankly, this is a con I probably will not be coming back to. <laughs> Uh, just for the speaker guy alone. Oh my God, you're terrible. I mean, tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, awful. but um, I did tell I did tell Andy. I talked with him a little bit, and uh, originally Andy was supposed to be set up at this booth, and something fell through. I know, I know why he didn't there. Well, something fell through. He ended up having something else get booked, and he <laughs> asked me if I wanted to take his place at the booth and sell there. So I was like, I'm still trying to get into shows as much as I can, and it's hard being new. Um, the, they call back a lot of the same vendors over and over again, so the new guys mm -hmm. hardly ever get a chance unless somebody cancels. So I was like, I gotta get as much exposure as I can, sure, I'll do it. Um, if I decide to come back next year, it's gonna be probably with Andy, and it's gonna be a lot bigger booth. Like, we'll probably get three booths and share it. Um, just because we can get it on the inside somewhere, away from the celebrities, and I think it'll do a little bit better. Like, I talked to some of the guys that were more centrally located in the middle and stuff on the outsides near the celebrities and they do really well over the last three days so i think it has to do with the location more than anything yeah well one of the things that we had a huge issue with mm -hmm. um saturday in Especially, particular yeah um is that all the hobbit guys they were, behind were, us. were like right behind us and the overflow was right beside our booth like going like so one whole right side on of the booth really you couldn't even get to it yeah. for a good part of the day yeah i mean but on the positive side all the people in line got to stare at it for a good hour yeah. as slow as they were moving <laughs> they give one good big sale out of one of these people in that line so i guess it worked out there all right yeah <laughs> but yeah it's 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 interesting but mm -hmm. no I, I would probably do it again i just don't think i'd do it solo you yeah know? i think i was set up with another booth to kind of like i don't know ease the cost a little bit i reckon I don't, I don't know how to put it now what i recommended for um someone coming to the show i think i would i i think as a consumer i think it's pretty good because there were a lot of deals out there there were and uh if you want to meet celebrities there's a lot of good celebrities there so yeah. for the consumer i would say you know what yeah now if you're going for the lord of the rings line 
Good luck. No. Two or three yeah. hour wait. Yeah. I would say, I mean, I feel like everyone who was not part of the Lord of the Rings, you could just about just walk right up to them and meet them for yeah, the most part. For the most part, yeah. Uh, uh, there were some lines that were like, 20 to 30 minute wait. Yeah, like but, Kevin Smith, I'm sure he was. Yeah, it was a couple of the wrestlers, know. stuff like that. But mm -hmm. for the most part, most of them you could just walk right up and stand in line for a minute or two and then yeah. get right up there. But, um, you know, like I said, logistically, they had a lot of things they needed to, like, I think, fix. Mm -hmm. um, my opinion, if, they, if I was setting up the show, I'd have all the celebrities in the middle. Right in the dead set middle, have it to where you had lines going one way this way, one way that way, and then the outside parts of the convention was for shopping. And all the celebrities in the middle of it. I think I might go a little bit different. How would you I, I might go like San Diego, where they have all the artists on one side, yeah, and then everything else on the other. I would kind of go that way and put all of them on one side, and then have all the buying stuff like from middle over. Yeah. So that way, all the crowds over there for the autographs and stuff. They also had rooms on the second floor upstairs for all these meet and greets and photo mm -hmm. ops and all that stuff. Yeah. And I think there were rooms up there that were probably big enough to accommodate just celebrities for the day, where that they would have had, where they that probably would have had to have them on the floor at all. But I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Oh, a huge positive! <laughs> I, if anybody's still watching this far into the video, a huge positive that they had was they had food trucks. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, they did. I mean, that to me, other cons look into that instead of just having, you know, the one little the thing over stand. there where you have, you know, hot dogs, hamburgers, and, and fries. I mean, they, the I mean, the tacos, though. the tacos were on point. Yesterday, I stood in line for 30 minutes for tacos. Yeah, today, I stood in line for 20 minutes for the, uh, the barbecue, barbecue mm -hmm. truck. But... Well worth it. The food was amazing. Yeah, I mean, those tacos yesterday. Mm. High as all get out. But, man, it was good. It, I mean, come on. They were uh, delicious. Oh. And nachos with uh, barbecue on them today. Oh, yeah, those were good. That was awesome. Mm. I, I had planned on not eating all of those. And he ate the whole thing. I, I, a couple I, of nachos I took. I was like, hey, you want some? He's like, yeah, all right. But he had already ate... ate the sandwich. I ain't watched you sandwich. And that's just sandwich this big <laughs> I mean, it's like, it was high, but I was like, that, you know what? I mean, it was like that. To it me, I, it's worth it. That yeah, thing was, it was worth it. It was delicious. So, anyway, I had to bring the food in there. But other than that, anything else? Nope. I think I'm good. Yeah, a lot of fun. Quit hanging out with this goober over here. Yeah, I reckon uh, you are right. Yeah, if weather permitting, I might try to get in around the disc golf in the morning for my other YouTube channel, Simply Incredible Disc Golf. Shameless plug. Kind of praying it's raining in the morning. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, it, it, will, it will be disc golf moist. You'll be doing it by yourself while I'm in the van. <laughs> but uh, that's all I got. And you guys have an incredible day. Have a good night.